Hey, what's up, metalheads and rockers? It's been a while since I've seen you guys out here. Thanks for tuning in tonight. As you know, I'm Elton. I'm the host with Underground Noise Webzine. This is webisode number 117. And I'm also here tonight, finally, with my co-host, Rhino, from Outcast Radio. But tonight, we have the pleasure of interviewing a legendary death metal drummer from the legendary death metal band Cryptopsy. Welcome, Flo Monier. Hey, all right. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, you're welcome, Flo. I'm glad you could be on my show tonight. Right on. Yeah, the first question I would like to ask you. Sure. I read somewhere that you were born in France and then you actually moved to uh, Canada. Is that correct? Yeah, close. Um, yes, I was born in France. Um, all my family's from there. Uh, around the age of seven, uh, my parents, they... Uh, moved to Chicago actually for uh for six years so lived in the states for six years and then we went up to to Montreal and in, in in Canada uh and been there pretty much ever since that's really cool that's really cool yeah, I saw a few I saw a few different you know different cultures when I was young I guess but traveled quite a lot yeah different cultures are always fun to explore for sure mm-hmm I always enjoy looking at, you know, West African instruments like a kalimba. I've been playing that for a while besides my guitars. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's tons of cool stuff out there that you can, like, pick up and um, try out and different sounds. And it gives you ideas for, you know, the melting pot, which is metal and stuff. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Were drums the first instrument that you played when you were younger? Uh, yeah, I'd like to say so, but no, I picked up uh, the first uh, instrument I, I tried was a saxophone for like kind of like a, a school band when I was in the States. Uh, I think I played that for like a year or two, and then I just, yeah, I just went to drums right after that. That's really cool. I was discussing with a friend just a, the other day. He's, he's the only bandmate that I've got for my Project Nightmare Crypt named Brendan Jackson. He also does fetal involvement. And he says to me, I don't know anybody that's like a drummer like Flo Monier. You would think he's a drum machine, but he's so consistent and persistent going 300 beats per minute almost in every song. How the hell do you do that after 30 years, Flo? Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess it's, it's just like anything else, really. It's just a um, a matter of getting used to it and then it, it just becomes a habit um, you know throughout the years I've just I'm developed I guess some kind of techniques that make it uh, easier for me to do that for for a longer time and um, so yeah you know it's just just like any job just like any sport just like any instrument it's just repetition repetition practice getting different techniques and um keeping at it and you know trying to trying to make uh trying to make the best of it so you know nothing nothing too incredible just uh persistence yeah yeah that's definitely a lot of it persistence definitely pays off that's the ticket right there mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. a lot of perseverance too well you gotta keep at it i mean it's uh it's, it's not a it's not a it's not a huge money making business so you really have to kind of love the, the the music that you're playing or the stuff that you're creating um in order to yes yeah, stick it out for over 30 years i guess <laughs> yeah that's that's very encouraging of you flo i appreciate that <laughs> seriously man, yeah, I, mean, I try to keep a positive outlook on life as much as i can but at the same time this world is going to get crazier every every day, you know. Oh, it's it's getting pretty sick out there, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, we deal we dealt with the pandemic. We've been dealing with drugs for years, violence, mm -hmm. all sorts of crazy shit. Yeah. I mean, what's next? The return of the lubonic plague? Who knows? Yeah, aliens, all that stuff. It's all coming. <laughs> it's all supposed to be coming, but. We'll, see. we'll we'll survive. I mean, we're we're used to crazy shit being in being in death metal and all that stuff. And they said with COVID, protect your drummer. He's in ten bands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah i mean there's yeah there's the new strains coming out now and stuff just just in time for school coming back and you know um lots of fun you know it, it, it really kind of um hurt us um over the past three years because i mean you know it, it you know we're not a huge acts that would tour like big auditoriums or where they'd have the space between the people and all that stuff so yeah we you know kind of like we're on pause for a good two two and a half three years um well, didn't help financially that's for sure so so back at it back at it now we'll start to, we start our tour with cryptopsy for the new release in september in the states and um some shows in canada so um yeah looking forward to it. it's been a while yeah, I was just about to ask you about that tour. It's called Terrible Chaos, right? Yeah. Okay. Because I see you guys are coming to Atlanta on 9-11, but for me, that's such a touchy kind of day for me because I'm a former New Yorker. Oh, and I, yeah. I probably won't be able to make it to the show. Sorry, dude, but... No, it's all good. I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do. I will totally be there. All right, right. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't checked the date, but I mean, we are starting in September, so... It, just one show that's got to fall on that date, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, the next time you come to Atlanta, I'll be sure to bring the only original copy of an album by you guys that I own. Oh, believe, yeah. or, believe it or not, it's the album, and then you'll beg. Okay, right on. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, that extremely brutal. That was one of the first albums I listened to from start to finish at least ten times in a row. Oh, excellent, excellent. So you got the copy like it's on Central Media, and and, and right. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yes, right on. Gotta support a homie in death mill every <laughs> it's, it's all about support, man. That's right, dude. That's right. I mean, I could understand the frustration of going three years without being on stage, but could you imagine going 14 years like myself? The last show I did was back in 2009. Oh my, okay. All right. Oh, well, we, you gotta get back at it then. Oh, I already am working on oh, good, it. Good, good. Good, yeah, man. like I was telling you, my buddy in Colorado, he's helping me with Nightmare Crypt, and right. we're planning on doing some shows eventually, but we, we want to make some merch, work on the demo, then get the album working on it, but I pretty much have everything written. It's just a matter of time with the bass and drums and... Yeah, of course. For that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good, man. I wish, uh, I wish you the best of luck with, with that, and absolutely. Hey, you as well, my friend. Yeah. I appreciate that. Right on. You know, I've never really asked too many musicians this question, Flo, but what song would you find to be your favorite by your band and also your most brutal yet most technical? Hmm. That's like a lot of things all together. <laughs> I'm sorry to make it sound like... No, it, no it's, all, it's all good. I think one of the most um, brutal and technical would be Two Pound Torch, but it's not my favorite to play. Um my favorite to play is off the 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 first tome tome one uh, of the EPs, and it's a uh, detritus. So the first song on tome one would actually be one of my favorite songs to actually listen to and to play. So yeah, I it is I mean it is pretty brutal, but it's it's really catchy and it really feels like a song. There's a lot of structure to it. There's like a mid part to it that I re that I really enjoy playing. It's just like a, a really groove, but it's really dark mid part. So, um, yeah, that's uh, as of late, uh, as of the past maybe five years or four years or whatever. That's my favorite song. To play. Yeah, I, I love everything you guys put out so far. Thank you. If I can hop in there, I have a question kind of on that. If you could go back, like, one song you've written and you're, like, years later, like, man, I wish I would have did this different. What song would that be? Oh, wow. That's a tough one because, you know, um, I mean, after after I record stuff, it's 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 done. You know, it's kind of um, – it's not forgotten, obviously, because, you know, some of the stuff we have to play and, and replay and stuff. But, I mean – you know, at, at one point when you're creating something, and especially when you're in, when you're creating and you're writing, and you're structuring it, you got to hit studio at one point. So you got you got to you got to tell yourself that you know, okay, enough. I mean, we could tweak on this. We can try to make it better. We could, you know. And usually, I think that first ideas are not always, but usually better 
So you, you got to go with your gut. And at one point you got to say, that's it. It's, 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 it's final. Um, now let's book some studio time so we can, you know, record it and get it and get it down. But I mean, you know, if, if you have to go back and then if I'd have to analyze like everything and then say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I would have done that. I would have done, I would have done this. And I guess with cryptopsy, but it's just the way it is. We don't stick to one riff for very long. And there's some riffs that I would say like, oh, I would, you know, it would have been cool if we just sat on this groove for a little bit longer and stuff. But that's just how cryptopsy is. And it's it's always been so you can't really, you know, you can't really change the uh, the formula too, too much. That's just the way. Um, that's just the way it is. You know? Nice. Yeah, that's an excellent answer. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Well, Flo, I got I got something I got to tell you about your music that it made me laugh at one time. I'm sure you remember your song called Mutant Christ, right? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, did you ever happen to see the video on YouTube of the Muppets? With yes. The yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Background? Yes, yes, yes. I saw that with, with the animal and the drums and all that stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I did see that. I'll never forget the day I got extremely fucking stoned off my ass and I watched that and I couldn't help but be in tears from laughing so hard. Oh, that's that's yeah, that was pretty funny. And and, and I'm gonna tell you a story about that too. I think I think it is mutant is it mutant Christ? Anyways, when right before we recorded None So Vile, um I was going to to university up in Canada and I was in film and stuff, and uh about two years ago i finally got the film for it's one of the songs from from blast me made flesh I, I think it is mutant christ that i filmed i filmed in uh black and white and some parts in color so you have you know um you have lord worm on it you have um uh, steve tebow original guitar player john levasa eric langois and myself and um very young ourselves and uh yeah i mean it's 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 all soundboard and stuff like that so i got to get around to try to piece it together and uh that's like the original video that never got released you know looking forward to it it should be interesting <laughs> it is <laughs> that's so cool though I'll, I'll get around to releasing it yeah, let me ask you this, Flo. What bands do you find to be iconic nowadays? Oh boy. Um there's like <laughs> probably too many to mention in there. Well, I'd say name five if you want. All right. I mean, in death metal, we definitely Napalm's still there. Um suffocation. You know, I mean, b b bands have, that have broken up that are coming back. Jeez, um, you know, I mean, not now is pretty, pretty iconic at this point. Um, and I'm, I'm sticking with, you know, well, except for Napalm, that's a British, but U.S. bands, if you wish. Um, man. I mean, Atheist is back doing doing stuff, and that's a little bit different too. It's on more on the technical side, so that's pretty iconic. Uh, my obituary, I mean, Cannibal, right? <laughs> just the list goes on. You know, Morbid Angel, I Am Morbid, all that stuff. It's um, there's quite a few, <laughs> and that's not even including anything in, you know, in Europe or 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 scandinavia or canada i mean canada you have you know gorgas you have voivod voivod are touring like crazy right now so and with and cataclysm cataclysm they're touring like crazy too right now um there's so many dude you know and everybody's like different everybody's got their own stuff um but yeah i guess you know people that usually make it and tough it out over 25 30 years you know, and have a good name for themselves are pretty iconic in this in this scene. Yeah, it's incredible. I yeah. can't believe Vader has been around for forty. Vader, they've been around for a while too. Super nice guys. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, and yeah, and they're still touring. Peter's still, you know, Peter's still at it, touring all over Europe. I, I don't know if they've done the, done the states in in a bit, but I think they have. Yeah, they just played in Atlanta back in March with Crazy yeah. and the Crib of Birth. That show was fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Crib of Birth, that's another one. Uh, Crisian, that's another one, you know. Yeah, three brothers making a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, just, you know, so many. Yeah. There's no way to avoid it. And no. it's like, all people flow, there's never enough music. No, I know. There's a. Uh, Music's a, music's a good thing, you know, especially in, in times like these, you know. Yeah, it helps people get out of negative situations. Sure, absolutely. Stay out of trouble, too, you know. So, yeah. hopefully. Well, yeah, we don't want to see anybody have real-life violence just because of taking lyrics in a literal term and doing something stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The first things that could be happening, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and I mean, this, this scene... People, most people are aware that it's, you know, it's kind of a satire. Some are a little bit more serious than others and stuff. But, I mean, it's it's a very, very uh, easygoing, peaceful, musical society, I find, in, in death metal, metal in general, you know. It's um, people unite rather than uh, divide. So it's a good thing. Absolutely. I totally agree with that statement, a hundred percent. Good. If I can hop in real quick, um, two-part question for you: Any pre-show rituals and any pet peeves, drum-wise? Um, pre-show rituals. I mean, I do try to warm up before every show, uh, so I'll give like about, I'd say like half an hour, half an hour to forty minutes, forty minutes, either on a practice pad or I got these sticks that have like. Um, kind of a rubber ball at the end of them so it's kind of I can practice on any surface um warm up my feet a little bit uh nothing too you know technical just just to get the, the blood flowing and stuff and i do do something sometimes that's um kind of ritualistic and more for my mental than anything else i'll um i'll kind of hum out or go through the first i don't know uh 15 to 30 seconds of each song you know, on the set list, starting from the first to the last, of course, just so that I'm kind of like mentally prepared that, yeah, this is how it's going to start. This is how we're going to do it and stuff. So uh, other than that, um, maybe a little stretching and that's it, you know, so warming up um, physically, mentally <laughs> and good to go, hopefully. <laughs> hey, stay nice. hydrated. What's that? Stay hydrated. It's just Stay a hydrated. reminder. <laughs> yeah, twice. Well, now lives on Mountain Dew, so. Well, yeah, carbonated <laughs> water. You gotta love it. Do the do. Where to go? Oh, oh. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Stay hydrated for sure. I mean, I, I I went through. I think it was two, two shows where I was um, completely dehydrated and. Uh, started to kind of lose consciousness you know so yeah stay hydrated i always have a fan on me when i'm playing um you know just makes life a little bit more simple and uh less painful you know? totally concurred again man i i can't i can't say it better myself you know yeah right on it was actually kind of funny in that segment just now do the do now you see it now you do not <laughs> we, we didn't see it for a while absolutely yeah it's the uh, major melon flavor it's the watermelon <laughs> one. Oh, right right yeah it's kind of funny because i always have to tell people about the caffeine content in mountain dew okay. original mountain Dew, 54 milligrams of caffeine this one 55 okay. so it went up by oh wow how much how much sugar is in that uh, too much to ask. <laughs> it should be right on the can. <laughs> Fucking hey, bro. Check it out, man. Okay, sugar content. Total sugar, 44 grams, includes 44 grams of added sugars. How can that be 87%? They lied. They forgot 1%. It's 88. Get it right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I calculate. I'm not endorsed, but I should be. That's oh, right. Yeah, Brian's, I mean, Rhino's correct. I do live off of 
Mountain Dew. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's got their vices, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm having a beer and I'm having a cigarette, so go ahead with the Mountain Dew. It's all good. Okay. What do cigarettes cost up there? Ooh. Okay, here we go. So, uh, my family and I, we like um, left uh, left Canada about a year ago, just because uh, we we're kind of just tired of the political climate and the, and the climate in general. So um, we bought this big fifth wheel, and uh, we drove down to uh, all the way from Montreal to Belize in Central America. Um, didn't really like it there that much so we left after a week and then we stayed in mexico for six months um and then went back to the states um stayed in texas a little bit and then florida and now we're, we're back here so in mexico cigarettes are about three dollars us pack um in the states where we were doing the the lucky strike for like 350 four bucks something like that and right now in canada they're about 12 11 12 bucks us a pack so Ouch. <laughs> yeah and i mean it depends on the state so we were in texas and florida so they're cheaper there but i mean new york and all that i mean it's what it's eight ten dollars us a pack over there you know so i think new york's like 14 bucks a pack now Oh, probably in the city, yeah. Probably. It's just ridiculous. And that's US. So that makes it, yeah, 16, 17 Canadian. We're like paying 14, 15 Canadian. That's why I said 11 US. But don't you wish you could go back to the 80s where you could buy a can of coffee and it was extremely tall? You could get it for like five or six bucks. Now you buy one about maybe two thirds the size less and you pay twice as much for it. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're, we're 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 evolving right as a society not we're just getting you know more and more played and taxed and charged and stuff i guess the more people there is the lesser money has the value the more inflation goes up i mean i don't see this i don't see this changing or going down anytime soon so i as well make the best of it you know wait back to your drumming i was going to ask you this Flo. What would you say is your favorite drumming technique and why? Um, I, said, I, I guess it's not a technique, but I love to incorporate um, uh, ghost noting in my playing. So it's more of, um, more of a, a fun technique, a little bit of a jazz technique. It involves more of a triplet feel and stuff when you when I'm when I'm doing ghost notes like in between beats like you know I've just, if you play like a regular four four kind of down beat with the snare on the two and four you can add little drags here and there with the snare in triplet time or in four four time I like to fill in the space um, so even when I'm doing like fast level bass and stuff like that if you listen closely in some of the recordings that I do um, you'll hear these like little drag notes um on the snare and sometimes even on the hi-hat if i'm doing a, a hi-hat b where it's not just you know very like linear kind of stuff um and i just i just i just like that feel i just like feeling it in the space and make it making something that's um uh, extreme metal or whatever a little bit more funky a little bit more jazzy with how you know for me that has a little bit more feel so I mean, I guess it could be a technique, but it's not. It's just like a root. It's a rudiment, you know. It's just um, a way of playing, and it's incorporated in the beat. But yeah, I like doing that. Um, just to, to 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 create a little bit more, you know, to create something a little bit more harmonious and and all that stuff. So yeah, you definitely have a lot of interesting things that you come up with, and I'm just like, holy shit, he did that. What the hell is this he's doing now? Whoa. Slow down. Nope, he's not slowing down. You're like a robot, dude. <laughs> I gotta ask with that. Tell us about your kit. Tell us about your rig. Um, my rig's like it's it's very basic right now. I mean, it's like you know, uh two toms over the bass drum, you know, not in between the bass drum, like over the bass drum, just like a, a traditional kind of kit. So I get uh, a 22 inch bass drum, 10 tom, 12 tom. 
And then I have uh, two floor toms, 14, 16 to the right of me, 14 inch snare. Uh, I'm using double pedal, been using double pedal for, I guess over like six years now. I used to do double double bass and that, I mean, either one, it's, it's, it's fine. It's just I'm old and I'd rather carry one bass drum than two. So, <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of cymbals. <laughs> uh, two hi-hats, you know, one on each side, one right on, on the right side. About three crashes, two chinas, two splash type things. So yeah, it's probably like a total of eight or nine, yeah, nine, nine or ten cymbals. And and that's it, dude. I mean, you know, I, I play with Pearl. I play Pearl drums, Evan Heads, uh, Vic Firth Sticks, Fabian Cymbals, uh, Roland Electronics, like on the trigger and the trigger modules and all that stuff. Um, Axis pedals. I want to try the, the 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 new Pearl pedals. I'm just waiting on a on a delivery for that. Um, yeah, just just basic because I found that the the more I have, it's probably just like a personal thing, but other drummers have related. The, the smaller my kit is, the more I'm focused on uh, trying trying to groove rather than trying to hit everything or as much as I can at the same time. So it for me becomes more musical rather than you know just spazzing out kind of thing. Yeah, nobody wants a spaz attack to go in order. <laughs> well, that's that's when I was a kid. That's how I I started out with the blast beat. It was just it was just spazzing out, you know, and <laughs> and then I I eventually developed a technique where it wasn't all nerves and, and you know and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, but at first it was like the guys the guys in the band were like pushing me, go faster, go faster. Can you go faster? Can you go faster? And that's you know, that's all I would hear, jam after jam. So I just spazzed out as kind of a, you know, just a way to shut them up. And they're like, yeah, I like that. And I'm like, oh, great. Now I got to do this all the time. <laughs> oh, I told you something. When you're a kid, you have every right to spaz it out. You know, that's that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what happened. I mean, I remember when I was a kid and I had my Gibson Custom Shop Edition guitar. It was the first electric that I ever had. My father bought it. Rest in peace, Dad. Well, long story longer, as Lee Harrison likes to put it, I was playing it one night and I came up with some really wicked riffs and I said to myself, man, I'm not going to remember these when I'm older. But you know what's funny? There were some riffs that I can still play from that exact night. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I get from like 2000. Guitar players have this like really weird memory thing, man. I, I can't do it. My memory's terrible. So uh yeah, kudos to you, man, because that's yeah, that's a long time ago. And it's that's that's some good memory. But you know, it's maybe just ingrained in you, you know. It was like such a special thing when you were younger and you had these riffs and stuff. So no, that's great, man. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Oh. Well, Flo, I got nine minutes. Well, actually, we've got like about eight minutes here. Yeah. Unless you go for more time, I could always restart the meeting after the time runs out on here, unless you want to just go with the rest of the time here right yeah, now. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, I mean, the time that's left is really cool. If you guys got any questions, shoot them out. Absolutely. Uh, I'm always have something to, to do over here. So, <laughs> and, and the kids as well. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, shoot me some questions. Uh, uh, you got yeah. any hobbies outside of music? You like to go fishing, say hunting, maybe oh. I haven't had much time to do any of that, to be very honest with you, in the in the in the past uh in the past few years. Um family takes uh takes takes up my time, you know. We try to we try to do things. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm working right now, I'm doing like um uh construction stuff, so you know come come a certain time at night um i'm, I'm asleep <laughs> i wake up early so um yeah i just right now it's just been focusing on um on working on on, on the family on you know the, the 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 new the new crypto stuff um just wrapping our heads around that and then having some 
relaxed time watching some some shows and stuff with my wife and just taking it easy and trying to relax and you know enjoy ourselves at the same time but i mean i like i like yeah i like fishing hunting hunting not so much but i've always loved fishing and um you know sports which haven't done much of recently got to get back into kind of like the working out routine and stuff because i like doing that and i find it helps the drumming so don't do it (laughs) 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 i broke my back at the gym in march so did you yeah yeah it doesn't take it doesn't take much to hurt to hurt the body so you got to be careful but um i i'm I'm, i know what to do i've been doing it for a long time like um and uh but yeah you got to be careful man because you can i I, I pop shoulders before kind of like uh you know hurt my shoulders because that's always the the weakest link um but yeah one thing at a time for now you know let me throw one at you real quick okay you could um take two bands or musicians past or present put them in one studio to produce one album who would you put in there wow well one of them would have to be zeppelin um i'd like to see the guys from zeppelin and pink floyd try to do something together actually that might be quite interesting um two guys man okay so what was that four gals two guys or gals yeah oh i got one i'd have i actually have i'd have heart the band heart and either pink floyd or led zeppelin compose like an album and then i'd have um man what's the singer for heart what's her name oh lord oh jesus i forgot her name was it uh, Linda Carlisle? It, 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 yeah, the other uh, because I, so. I yeah. got a couple of their vinyls. I got yeah. Harper Hotel and the other one. Yeah, uh, one of my favorites. One of my actually favorite songs right now is uh, "Little Queen." Is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, "Little Queen" from Heart. Um, so I have her, um, and then and then John Bonham playing drums. That's I mean that's what becomes off the top of my head and I, it, it, I you know it's not it's not metal but it's it's kind of it's kind of heavy rock you know but uh that's what that's what comes to me and wilson is it Anne wilson? and wilson yeah oh <laughs> so yeah i don't know what kind of chemistry that would be but i'm sure you'd be interested sorry i just went blank for a second there i feel like uh my computer was shutting down but thankfully oh. it wasn't okay <laughs> Yeah, that's so, about user control, and they had to X out of it. Right, you right. And your AOL. Oh, and by the way, like in my comparison or in my uh, compositional team, uh, yeah, some people have to come back from the dead, so it's it's kind of a tough one. <laughs> it's not very realistic. <laughs> right, Do they right. like it? What's that? Your kids like you doing death metal. They they support you with that. I mean, yeah, you know they um they're into their stuff their their music and stuff but they yeah they like listening to it once in a while and um it's always like a kind of a age thing with you know the older they get the more they'll get into metal you know um i mean i have like a 19 year old boy 18 year old boy and 11 year old boy so, oh wow yeah so they're into their own you know their own things and they'll they'll play me like well Liz, i really like this metal track I said, well, okay, no, I know a little bit about metal. It's, you know, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be the one being critical, you know, and stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, to, for me, it's like music's like food, man. It's like an acquire, you know, it's, it's just taste. Tastes are different, and so be it. You know, they'll get into it, and then they won't like it, and they'll say, why, why is this guy, why is the guy screaming all the time? Well, that's just that's just the way it is. And <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't gonna push it on them, you know oh yeah you got any more questions around sure the one i like to ask it tells a lot about people the beatles or elvis oh, oh wow i mean i'll say <laughs> i'll say the beatles only because they're composing 
and what they composed and what they've done for for rock metal music and stuff like that was the start that they they composed all this crazy stuff and you know the three part vocal harmonies and all that stuff uh it's just magic but but elvis was elvis i mean what a voice what a presence what a character um just i just chose the beatles because they compose their stuff you know yeah, i thought about this like reading as to who's into it just kids now like you don't see elvis shirts on kids no if you see them they're beatles yeah yeah true enough but then again you know everything's cyclical and circular and all that stuff so i'm sure i'm sure elvis will have his uh but it's, it's, it's just so it's yeah i think it has to do with composition you know it has to do with the feeling and stuff and, and then the beatles had tons of feel you know so and plus yeah ringo and paul are still alive so there's that there's that too i mean you know um yeah i think paul's coming back with, with another tour i think he was like a little bit down and out for a while and i think he's uh heading back on stage for fuck's sakes <laughs> i saw him outdoors 2016 he played four and a half hours straight Jeez. in the middle of july that's just ridiculous but i mean you know that's stamina that's if he loves it i mean i'm sure he loves it you know because i mean if it was just for the cash he wouldn't be playing for four hours trust me he'd be in and out in half an hour done <laughs> i gotta tell you guys you know if it was up to me and if i had my own solo project i would have to call myself alvis <laughs> but it, it would suit me but at the same time nightmare could so much more fun yeah, Alvis. That's good, man. Yeah, I got, I got, I got my own Al language. I don't want to bore you to death tonight with it, Flo. But if, ever, if we ever meet in person, we're grabbing a brew, and I'm going to give you the Al language treatment, <laughs> along with Matt. Give me a few brews, and then we'll get into it. Then I guess. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to restart this meeting, you guys, so that way we could do part two. All right. Yeah. So I'd say just give me a couple minutes and then I'll be back on. All right, cool. In a little bit. All right. Hey, what's happening, people? We're back again. This is part two of the interview with Flo Monier of Cryptopsy. I hope I said your last name correctly. Yeah, man, it's hard to pronounce, dude. I mean, it's it's Monier, but I'm saying it with a French accent, right? So. So I guess in English, yeah, Monier, Monier is fine. It's yeah, absolutely. Well, I got a new nickname for you, Flo. I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna call you Mutton Chop. Mutton Chop? Yeah, because you got the mutton chops growing on your on your cheeks, man. Oh, Mutton Chop, huh? I kind of I kind of dig it. I do too. I think it's I think it suits you. And my wife's next to me. She's digging it too. She's just she's just I think she just peed her pants a little. Uh oh. <laughs> Is that normal? Yeah, well, you know, shit happens. <laughs> yeah, well, shit happens. It's the wipe that counts. <laughs> exactly. Yes, sir. <laughs> what would you say is your favorite thing about death metal, Flo? Favorite thing about death metal, huh? Yeah, uh, the... Um, the ability to do whatever the heck we want to do without any certain you know norms or, or or commercial standards or radio standards just being able to, to compose and create what we feel like like doing i guess that's a um a cool thing because it uh, it lends to creativity and lends to new ideas and something interesting my fun I would like you to take me way back, Flo. I mean, mm. way back when. I just, I just, I just told you my memory kind of sucked, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, that's not my fault that you got short-term memory loss or long-term. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let me help you a little bit with that. All um, right, go ahead. What was it like when Cryptopsy had their very first show? Oh my god. <laughs> Like how old were you? Like 17, 18, maybe 19? I think I was I think I was like 17. No shit. 
Well, I mean, not under cryptopsy. It would have been under necrosis. Okay. Um, I mean, it was, it, it, it was, I guess, I guess it must have been, I don't remember, I don't remember, but I guess it must have been like really nerve wracking and stuff, but at the same time, really fun. Um, I don't even remember where it was. I mean, it, yeah, in, in Montreal somewhere, but I, I don't remember the club. I don't think it was for Fun Electric. Um, I think it was some other, you know, it's, uh, did I even do, I think I, no, uh, did I do Battle of the Bands? No, I didn't do Battle of the Bands. No. All right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It must have been nerve wracking. <laughs> Um, oh. but a but a fun after party, I'm sure. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a fun after party. You know, everybody's got to have one of those. Well, you got to celebrate your first show, and I'm sure we did. That's probably why I forgot. <laughs> yep, get out the raffle tickets, free t-shirts. There, <laughs> there you go. Buy merch, everybody. That's important. Support yeah. your bands. Support your uh, smaller bands that are overseas, which I have the pleasure of interviewing because there's a lot of bands that. Some people don't know about bands like Chaos Rising, Cobra Co, Damaged and Co. Damaged and Co is from Malta, just like Beheaded. Nice. When I, yeah, when I interviewed uh, Damaged and Co, I mentioned to them, you guys friends with Beheaded? They're like, oh, yeah, we know who those guys are. Yeah, crazy death metal motherfuckers. I'm like, wow, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a big, uh, it's not a big island. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they, 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 they know each other quite well. Yeah, everybody knows. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Merch right now is super, super important, you know. So yeah, support, uh, support your metal music. I think uh, first show I think that we did. I don't even think we had merch to be honest. So no, nope. Hey, that's okay. Hey man, it comes with the you know with growing up, you know, and then learning. So it's fine. Yeah, exactly. And everybody starts somewhere, right? Right on. I mean, for me personally, when I was growing up. I mean, when I was like a teenager, actually, I should say, because when I was five, I still remember listening to Maiden, and it was too loud for me as a kid. But yeah. when I was like 13 or 14, I started listening to bands like, you know, Mortification, Deliverance, Petra, stuff like that, because that's what I was you no know, listening to. But as I got into high school, I started listening to bands like, you know, Cryptopsy and also Campbell Corpse and Suffocation. And I was like, I like the intensity because they're both doing almost the same thing, but the lyrical format's a little bit different. But right. Don't forget like, Backstreet oh. Boys. Was that which one? Don't Robert? forget Backstreet Boys. Mm. Oh, that's your favorite. You like the Backdoor Boys. Don't be started, Rhino. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> but no, seriously, Flo, it's interesting because there's it, they both have that same type of intensity. Yeah, but what I was trying to say is I still respect all of it, regardless of the message, you know, because I love everything. I'm not going to lie. One day it could be Michael Jackson or it could be you guys or yeah. or it could be Nina Simone for that matter or Wing yeah. or Frank Zappa. Limp yeah. Biscuit. Yeah, yeah that's you. <laughs> it's Fred. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I'm notorious for picking on Limp Bizkit on my show, but I promised myself that I can't do it anymore. And so I dressed up like Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's all good, man. Music is music. You know, everything it is. Yeah, it is. I can't knock somebody for what they listen to, but then oh. some music, if I don't like it, I'm just like, whatever. Don't listen to it, you right? Exactly. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. That's that's the best way to put it, dude. It's that, it's that simple. Yeah. Huh? It's that, it's that simple. You know, you don't like something, don't listen to it. You know. Here's it's, another. Uh, yeah. Here's another good question for you, Flo. Sure, man. How did you guys find Mount find out uh, find out about Matt McGacky? I actually interviewed him last year. Oh, right on. Well, he he was in um. In a in a in a band uh, that 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 we knew um, pretty well, and I think that he had um, they had opened up uh, they opened up for us at one of the shows, and I mean I was pretty, very impressed with his you know vocal range. He was doing like a lot of uh, clean singing um, in that band, and uh, 
Three Mile Scream, is that what it is? What it was? Three Mile Scream. Um, anyways, memory again. Um, and uh, yeah, and then at, at the, the same night, you know, we were actually looking for vocals and I asked him, you know, you want to, you want to try out, you want to give it a go and stuff like that. And he said, sure. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty simple, you know, it's pretty effortless and he's put a lot of work in, into his vocals and, you know, finding a, a range that he's, that he's comfortable with. And to be very honest with you, even he's, he is musically trained and vocally trained so um you know he can he can clean sing like super good super nice vibretto super nice range and and pitch and um obviously he can growl as well so growl and scream so you know he's been um he's been an asset and uh, i appreciate him very much being in uh in this band that's incredible yeah, because he he said a lot of great things about what he enjoys doing with you guys. And I gotta I gotta say, you know, my hats off to you guys because you guys have been around for over thirty years, and you guys keep inspiring me to keep going. Thank you, man. Thank you, fans. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, because there's so many bands out there that I listen to almost on a daily basis, Flo, and I'm just saying to myself, wow. I like what these guys are doing, but I also like what these guys are doing. It's just like, it's never ending process. Well, it's great to have like, you know, different eggs in your basket, you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, even though I pretty much all taste the same, you can cook them up differently. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> but yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I like musical diversity too. I can't get hooked on, you know, only listening to one thing and being a fan of one thing. And that, and that just actually brings up a good point that I do tell people when I do clinics and um, drum stuff. And I always tell people, you know, try to listen to as much diversity as possible so that you're, you know, so that you can just take bits and pieces from what you like and utilize them for you and, you know, create your own kind of persona um, by, you know thousands of different influences rather than like you know a lot of people well they'll listen to to rush uh, and as a drummer you know the drummer is going to listen to neil and he's going to sound like neil you know but he but he's not neil pert so you know try to try to diversify and create your own kind of um person and that's why like you mentioned listening to all sorts of different things is just really cool. It's got to be. Yep, that's a that's a good way to look at it. Hmm. Absolutely, man. I I fully agree with you on that as well. Cool. Yep, someone's got to do it. And here we are doing it, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Keep the underground alive. Yeah. Living the dream. <laughs> Living the dream. Every day. As, long, as long as you stay positive, that's that's. That's the important thing, you know? Yep, exactly. And always walk away from a negative situation because you want to suffer with a horrible consequence afterwards. Yeah, not good, not good for the not good for the mind and body. Yeah, negativity just we have we have a, enough of it around. We don't need more, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Life's too short to be pissed off all the time, as they say in American history X. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Flo. When you yeah. first started playing drums, what bands influenced you, and what bands influence you nowadays? Um, so, I mean, I grew up listening to rock, you know, Van Halen, uh, Zeppelin, all that stuff. Um, started listening to to Iron Maiden as well when I was a kid, and um, and then I think what really influenced me a lot was Slayer. Um, and then once I started listening to Slayer, I started picking up all these kind of Bay Area thrash kind of things, um, like Forbidden and and then uh, Deliverance. And there was the, the Christian band Believer. All these things. I remember are... Believer. Yeah, and, and yeah, Extraction from Mortality, Dimension. It, it was just it was amazing, you know, and. Uh, and, his, and it was diverse. All these that bands had something like, and then and then I started into Sepultura and um, 
and then it just escalated really quickly from there. Um, uh, like, um, I think it was, I, I think I went from, um, from that to pestilence and suffocation and, and, and napalm and all that stuff. And then, and then I, then I heard cynic on the focus album and I was really, really amazed by it that they could, you know, utilize this jazz element and incorporate it into, into death metal. And that really influenced me in, in the death metal kind of, kind of thing as to use to, to, cause I had splashes and all that stuff, but I wasn't like super into using them and stuff. And it just, just kind of opened the doors, you know, um, and, and more triplet feel and odd timing and stuff and cryptopsy. Um, so, I mean, that influenced me a lot uh, and still does. And uh, I mean, lately, I lately I, I must tell you guys, I haven't been listening to much stuff at all. I just, I'm influenced by a lot of gospel type different, like drummers, just, just gospel, gospels like all over the place. It could be like rock, it could be metal, it could be jazz, it could be funk. Um, it's really all over the place. So, you know, um, bands right now that influence me, I, I wouldn't say a lot because I'm just like we, I, I've been just compo we've been composing the uh, cryptopsy and ultimas have been composing for you know the past four years. So I'm just trying to focus on that and try to create something from what we've had before and what we want to do that's new. Um, so I'm just concentrating on drumming and to be honest, I just want to make it as groovy and as you know so in some points maybe not so much with cryptopsy but just easy and 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 with with a good feel um so yeah i mean that's where i'm at right now but you know i i i'll never you know get away from the classics um and even just the, just the, the you know new drummers coming out all the time like you see the clips on on youtube and all that stuff so yeah just just a whole bunch of different things i guess that's really cool Coors like yep what was like oh yeah in mountain doom the blue mountains yes <laughs> do the doom <laughs> i can't stop saying it <laughs> <laughs> Once you say you can't stop, you know. No, right. <laughs> All that sugar, no wonder. <laughs> that's probably why I don't have kids. I drink too much too. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they that's what they say, right? I guess if you drink code red. <laughs> <laughs> something about that red dye does something. I don't know. Uh, I guess. Yeah. We'll just I, save that for a rainy day, you know. Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to my water during the day and some beers at night. There you go. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, a good, um, yeah but, sorry, a good thing for a hot show. Um, my friend Harley introduced me to it. Little package you buy, they're called Liquid IV. Okay. And they're hydration multipliers. You mix it in with the water and you feel you feel the um hydration in your veins like immediately. Oh, really? Huh? He got real big on them. My friend Gary had a heart attack over in Italy okay. during the show. Okay. And I mean, he was dead four and a half minutes. Oh, wow. So afterwards, you know, Harley got Gary using them. So. Huh. Well, that's that's interesting. Yeah. What do they call What do they call them, Brian? Liquid IV. Liquid IV. Okay. That sounds kind of insane. <laughs> not, not something I would not something I'm gonna try, but if I do drink alcohol, it's gonna be a kombucha. <laughs> it's gonna be the perfect blend. <laughs> That's right. Lavender. <laughs> I just saw I just saw something online. What is it called? Celtic sea salt. Celtic sea salt. Yeah. And it's just like this like 92, 92 minerals in it. And then you, just, you can just take it, you put it in food and whatever, or you can just take a little bit and put it in your tongue and, and drink some water with it. And that's that's electrolyte power, like, you know, natural power. And supposedly it's just fantastic for you. So we got all our minerals from the hose as kids. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> now it's just fluoride, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have uh, we didn't have a lot of masks uh, around back then, did we? Yeah. Well, I don't know how often you get asked this question, but um, for all the albums that Cryptopsy has come out with, uh, what what guitar tunings do you guys play, and does it? You know, get tossed up from album to album, or does it stay yeah. the same? Yeah, there's some songs that are different uh, from from others, um, and uh, I'm like kind of like the worst person to ask this because uh, uh, what are they tuned to? I'm trying to... I don't remember what big. I I know what I could. I mean, here. You guys come up with another question. I'll uh, I'll I'll text Chris right now and ask him. <laughs> I was going to tell you, I, I with my band we play in D standard, but we also play in drop C. Okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes that drop, you know, tuning makes it a little bit easier to play guitar, but it makes the strings a little bit more wobbly. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It sounds good too, right? It's pretty heavy, right? Hey. It sounds good. It's got a good beat to it. Hey, I'm all for it. There you go. All right, hang on. Let's change that. All right, we'll get an answer soon. The power of technology, you know? <laughs> Gotta love that. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. <laughs> that dude hated technology. Well, obviously, he lived in the woods in a little cabin, so I guess... Um... Yeah, you seen the same documentary out on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I and I guess he didn't really want to be uh, found out. So you know, uh, he he says, see that fast, B standard. Okay, B standard. Yeah. But let me ask you this, Flo. Uh, your band name Cryptopsy is like a, two words in one, right? Crypt yeah. and autopsy. Yeah. I kind of yeah. figured because. I remember one time one of my friends says to me, oh, they must have gotten their name from the uh, crypto quotes. I'm like, no! Yeah. <laughs> you <see> me? <laughs> but, <laughs> no! You know, this, was, this was like Lord of Worm that came up with this thing. And it, yes, it's the, you know, the autopsy of a crypt, the dissection of death, uh, whatever, you, you know, however you want to interpret it. Um, but cryptopsy is actually a, a psychological term. Yeah. Uh, and I forget what it is, but it, I think it's an actual. Uh, it, it's 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 in a uh, psychological dictionary, uh, psychology dictionary, and it, it's I don't I forget what it means, but yeah, it's an actual word. But we didn't at the beginning. Yeah, you're right. It's two words put together for us. Yeah, I somewhat figured that you know because it was really really catchy and it was just genius. Whoever came up with that name. Well, that, that was Lord Worm, but I mean, you know, for us being used to, you know, death metal and and these different names and stuff like that, it's like, oh yeah, it's cool, you know. But when like you know, like a family member asks you, yeah, what's the name of your band? You know, Cryptopsy, and you know, they say, what Crypt Crypto Crypt Two Crypt Quora, you know, and they're <laughs> so. I mean, as far as like you know, easy saying, easy uh, easy listening, and all that stuff, it's um far from it, but. Yeah, we dug it when when uh, when the worm man came up with it, so we stuck with it. You still keep in contact with your former members? Yeah, some of them. That's cool. Not, not all of them, but yeah, some of them. You know, some of them are are easier to talk to than others. But absolutely, yeah. That's really cool because it's it's good to have friends, past, present, future. Yeah, people have shared experiences and stuff like that, and. You know, and I mean, you know, it was, it, you know, it's, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it work, but it was some kind of, you know, like, um, um, camaraderie and, uh, uh, you know, work partners and all that stuff. But I mean, it, you know, it went beyond that because of the creation part of it. Um, so, Yeah. You know, some of them stayed friends and others didn't. And that's just the way it is. You know, um, we've always uh, had member changes, usually for the progression of the band, um, the evolution of the band. So, you know, 
the old members they 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 know that they realize that too you know um, and, now, and then there were circumstances beyond our control and i mean not everybody wants to do this for over 30 years either so you know no well, as long as you got the energy and the stamina more power to you flow because yeah i guess the determination too of trying to make something of it and maybe just being being a little bit silly too and holding on to it you know and um just because it does something to you or for you when you're actually playing so yeah well flo i'm gonna ask you two more questions and then i'm gonna let you get on with your evening so you can do what you gotta do so I'm right on, sure you're a busy dude just like ourselves well good man. Busy's uh, good. i appreciate everything you've done like i said ever since i heard about you guys and i would really like to tell you thanks for giving us a portion of your time tonight well thank you for the support and uh it's my pleasure it's been fun that's really cool um what would you like to say to your fans out there um check out the new uh the new album um please do it's going to be really um really interesting um so as gamora burns um on nuclear blast i haven't been on the label for a bit uh we chose not to and then we just decided uh you know we got a we got a good friend down there and let's give him a chance and see what we can do together um and uh so yeah check out the album for sure check out the videos there's two of them out right now and uh you know our canadian and american friends come and come and support us when we uh when we tour in a city near you um we'll have some fun hope you guys will have some fun too and um then it's going to be asia and europe and you know that that whole thing hopefully if the world doesn't uh collapse before then <laughs> i don't think it will man across, I across my fingernails for you all right thanks brother yeah i don't think it will either so yeah we'll do the whole run and, and we'll be back in the states um sometime actually probably in may of um of next year no so, just when you were mentioning different countries i came up with another question for you right off hand yeah. Are there any countries that you have not been to that you've always wanted to do a show in? Yes, there's uh, Greece. <laughs> I have never been to Greece. And um, we were mentioning 9-11 uh, earlier, and we were with two two bands uh, from, the, from New York uh, touring Europe, and we were going to do Greece. I think it was two days later uh after after so i would be september 13th um and that got canceled uh so greece i've always really wanted to to go there and just haven't been there yet i mean i will uh in the future for sure but um you know there's tons of countries i haven't played do, do i necessarily want to play on i'm not sure <laughs> you know um do i want to go visit yeah maybe um but there's lots of beautiful things out there but when you're you know to see and to experience but you know when you're on tour it's it's basically in and out and not a lot of time to to enjoy a country for its culture or its sites um so off the top of my hand greece is the one that that, that came out first yeah i was going to tell you there's a band in greece they're known as uh incineration okay that brutal, sounds familiar. Yeah, they're brutal death metal. Okay. And uh, they're actually pretty decent. You know, they uh, kind of remind me of like early Cannibal Corpse, early Incantation. How long have they been around? Because it sounds familiar. Um, Honestly, I think 2004, maybe 2006. I don't recall exact. Okay. But they are decent. You know, I'm not going to lie. I oh. like it. Cool. Cool. So look it up. Yeah, I'm gonna book no nightmare more. crypt on a North Korean tour. <laughs> nightmare crypt. Yeah, that's my project. Yes, that's what you were mentioning before. But North Korea, you want to go there, huh? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that's what I didn't Rhino, mention. Rhino's but... trying to be encouraging about it, and it's like yeah. that's that's actually not a bad idea, Rhino. If that ever happens, but I'd like to tour Sweden. He just wants that's where my mom's ancestors 
Oh, sweet. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And my dad was English, so his are England. All right. Right on. Well, that's cool. I think Brian just wants to send you to North Korea. Well, hey, as long as I'm not on, as long as I'm not on tour with Fred Durst, I'll be fine. Oh, <laughs> oh you know the rule again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't know you. All right. Two to two to two, you guys are even. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this too funny? Let me ask you this. Okay, I got two more questions because we only got 10 minutes left in this segment. All right. Uh, where do you see cryptopsy in the next five years? Um we uh I mean, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do this this album cycle for sure. We wanna take advantage of it. We wanna create a lot of um uh, new merch as well and um what we, what we can do and go from there and we'd like to finish up uh the tomes because there's supposed to be three tomes so um we'll we'll uh we'll check it out we're at you know tome two this is a full length it's not part of the tome series so in the next before the next five years i'd really like to um have tome three out and maybe the start of a a new full length but we'll see you know i don't i don't like to um to go too far ahead because um what's that because <laughs> uh you know life is uh interesting as <clears throat> as far as um not knowing what's next so um yeah just you know finish up the 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 ep series that's for sure that's awesome as well Keep it going, man. Keep it going. You got my support, and thanks for your support. Yeah, well, thank you, guys. Well, we'll try. We'll try to keep it going for sure, you know? Yeah, I'll definitely keep in contact to you, with you, see what's going on in the Cryptopsy band. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, my final question, my friend. Do you have any last words for Underground Noise Webzine? This was much fun i uh, appreciate you guys doing this um and um it's 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 always about the support man um you know you guys keep going and and hopefully uh, other band members will support you as you support them um and it just it's great it's a great thing you know it it it, it, it introduces people that might not know um the personalities of of people and um you guys are doing a good job and uh i i appreciate it very much hey we appreciate you flo thanks for your kind words dude thank you guys thank you very much man i'm i'm humbled to hear that uh, <laughs> my hey. my absolute pleasure same here dude same here by the way keep your horns up for metal and rock support your local music scene support the underground Support Cryptopsy, support Underground Noise Web Scene, Nightmare Crypt, support Rhino and Outcast Radio, and also stay the fuck out of trouble. It ain't worth it. Right on, guys. Thanks again, Flo. You've been a blast. Yes, thanks, thank man. <laughs> a blast beat. <laughs> thank you, guys. Be safe and take care, and we'll see you soon in the States, I hope. Well, I know I'm going to miss the 9-11 show flow, but like I said, in May, next time you guys come down, I'm there. Right on, man. Right on. You guys, you guys take care and thank you again. Yes. Oh, thank you. All right. Be good. Thanks. We will. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Rock on.